What's up, guys and girls? It's good to see you today on the Speak and See Show. I ask that you like, subscribe, and click that notification button so when I get the information out, you can get this fresh information in. We are going over what's going on in the SBA right now as we speak with the letter that Ben Cardin and Van Hollen sent over saying, hey, put more money back in for those people. Their money is there. Do it now. Don't tell them they're not getting it. Tell them that we are working on making sure that they do. And I am going to be going over this video for you. I want to thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, click that notification button so when I get this fresh information out, you can get it in. And I just want to say I do read your comments. I am going to go over one of those comments that I got today. And as far as saying, hey, you didn't quite uh, deliver it yesterday the way I would like to have it delivered, you want to slow it down, break it down for us into a little bit more context. Because I was talking a little bit too fast. Maybe I was going like this, maybe I was going like that. And I'm sorry. I want to make sure that we're very clear on what's going on in the SBA right now so that you can get funded through that idle loan program that, of the SBA without any confusion as to what is actually happening. Now, as far as your $10,000 idle grants that were promised you in the CARES Act and you were put in that purple zone or you did not get that grant as promised in the CARES Act, it was supposed to go to all small businesses regardless of size or location. We are going to continue fighting for that as well. Hopefully, you can get that direct deposit, $9,000 or whatever it is. So if you already got something, then you should get the remainder thereof, the balance thereof. You should get the rest of it direct deposited into your bank account. And we are working on that as well. So can somebody out there just say, hey, yeah, we still want our 10K. Feeling pretty good about it too. Yeah. Okay, guys and girls, so you saw the video yesterday. If not, then you can watch this one instead because what we're going to do is we're going to go over that that letter that Congress had just sent to, we can put that up there, this letter right here that, that, not Congress, I'm sorry, the senators of Van Hollen and Cardin have just sent over to Isabel Guzman saying, Guzman, what are you doing? You're screwing these people out of their money. You promised them it would be in, in there. You told them to keep on applying for it as up until the last day and then you ended it early. What's going on, Isabel? You're making a mistake. There's money in there. Go get that money. Take the money back out of the SBA that you took from the SBA and put it back into your those accounts for those small businesses out there who need it. Do that and do that now. Immediately would be good is what they're saying. So we're going to go over this with you right now, and I'm going to break it down to you into the details of each sentence that they wrote. So this will give you clarity on exactly what's going on. So we're going to jump right into this. Once again, like and subscribe. Here we go. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go over this letter that was sent to Isabel Guzman here, who is the administrator of the SBA. It was the letter was sent from the United States Senate by and written from Ben Cardin, who is the Senate Committee on Small Businesses, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, and as well as Chris Van Hollen, who is the chairman of the Senate of Appropriations of Subcommittee and Financial Services. So he decides what's going on. And this gentleman decides where the money is appropriated. So these are two big players in this ball game. These are the two main guys that tell us where the money goes and how it gets there. And it's got to go through them both. So we are writing, they say, an express disappointment in the Small Business Administration's SBA decisions to close down the COVID idle program ahead of the May 6th deadline that, that announced to its borrowers last week. I believe all of us understand exactly how that's working right now is you got those letters and we got that um, the letter from the Congresswoman. Let me put that up there as well, stating that there were only ones that were going to be getting the money were those that were obligated funding or funded in the in the queue. The S submitted and approved and obligated were not going to be getting funds no more. The unqualified and declined and duplicates were not going to be getting funded no more. We thank again Mauricio Guerrera for for sending that out to us. But those were the people that were being told, look, sorry, the money's gone. The money's gone. Well, the money is not is not gone. There's money there. This is what Ben Cardin and Van Hollen are saying is, why did you do that? What you did was was way off chart to what you were supposed to be doing, to where you were actually, your, re your reach went too far, Isabel. So basically, that's what they're saying there is, you should not have done that. So let's go back to the letter. So the next line goes, and I'm reading this verbatim so you all can understand it. This decision is particularly confounding when by the agency's own admission, additional funding remains available for the transfer to the idle program under the authority of Section 9006B2A of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. So what they're saying right here is, you know that you have the authority to go get this money from another area. From the we can appropriate the funds, which is where once again Van Hollen comes into play. He's here. 
uh, Senate Appropriations Committee. So, so they're saying, you know that you can go get these funds, and the funding is available to transfer over from this program into the SBA Idle Loan Program from as, as far as the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act goes. And they're saying, by your own admission, you should know that. In the next line, they go on by saying, by prematurely shutting down the program, the agency appears to have prioritized its own administrative needs over those of the thousands of borrowers that await the decisions of their applications. So what they're saying here is, is you've taken money from here before and you put it into your own organization for your own funding to build up the SBA instead of giving it to those small businesses out there. So what you've done, Isabel, is you've prioritized the needs of the administration, the SBA, over the needs of the small businesses who should be first in line to get their funds. So you've taken your own thoughts in your own administration's needs over the needs of over the needs of you, the small businesses, the, that's us, you know, there's like, hey, we're the ones who paying taxes, not to build up the SBA. We're doing this for the COVID relief program. This is this was a pandemic program for the small businesses. It's not a pandemic program to bring up the SBA and make the SBA this huge uh, beastly magical uh, presence of money that is just supposed to be delivered and delivered and delivered. No, this was a COVID idol program, a COVID-19 pandemic program, and it wasn't made just to continue growing the SBA when we probably won't ever see this ever again. So basically she prioritized in, in small what they said. She prioritized herself in her own SBA agency over small businesses. Very, I, I think I just said that like 20 times, but I think you get it now. Now let's go into the next one. Now this, this next line says a lot, even though it's not that big, it does say a lot. It says, furthermore, it has done so in a way that has needlessly confused borrowers and raised expectations. What we've got to realize is when you're dealing with the Congress and you're dealing with the Senate and when you're dealing with the SBA, the SBA is supposed to follow the intent or the intentions of the Congress and the, and the uh, senators. They're supposed to be on the same page as to what the intent was of this bill to happen. And by them issuing this little sentence right here saying, look, you confused the borrowers and you've raised expectations. So this is kind of a, it wasn't our intent to do that, but you went ahead and did it with how you went forward in your administration and it really threw them off. Over the past week, the SBA sent notifications encouraging existing borrowers to apply before the program closed on May 6th. By announcing that the program was out of funds on May 5th, prior to the application deadline, the SBA has misled thousands of struggling small businesses into believing that funding for idle loans would be available. But did they not? And that is a very accurate statement where Ben Cardin and Van Hollen are saying, look, you were saying, come on, guys, there's more money. Come on, we're going to give you more loans. We're going to up the ante here. There's more money in here and it's going to be delivered to you. So put in some more applications. And they're doing this right before they're about to run out of money, or so they say, run out of money. They're running out of one program funds, but they can pull from another. And they're saying, come on guys, get in, jump on in. We've got more money, come and get it. So more people were applying. And if you apply for a loan, you know that that's not going in front of somebody's face that day. It could take weeks or months before somebody actually gets in front of them and says, okay, I got your applications. So why are they asking for people to apply when it's going to be defunded in another day or two. It didn't make any sense. It was very confusing, very misleading. And knowing that they had the money somewhere else and weren't going to pull it, then why did they do this? This is the question that Ben Cardin and Van Hollen are asking, saying, what are you doing? So let's go to the next one. Furthermore, if funding does indeed remain available that could be transferred under the authority of the IIJA to serve borrowers in the idle loan program, the SBA should exercise that authority immediately so that pending applications for modifications, rehearings, and appeals can be processed and funded. That, that's very clear. <laughs> Let us make this very clear. If you can exercise that authority, immediately do so so that we can continue processing and funding those that are out there in rehearings and appeals, and they should have said reconsiderations, rehearings, 
same thing if you're going through the application process right now and you're appealing or whatever you should not have been nixed especially after they just said yeah we've got money come on in apply it just makes it, it didn't make any sense and these guys are pretty much saying you've got money out there let's make it make sense okay next line the administration's request in the president's budget for 320 million in transfer authority from the idle targeted advanced program has not been approved by congress and it's not within the administration's authority to prejudge congress intent by setting aside funding that's a big word intent by setting aside funding for program administration when eligible small business has yet to be served so let me draw this next one out for you closer so that you have a very clear understanding this is a very important piece of the uh the page that we all are getting um so let's go into this and this is very interesting so we say in the administration's request in the president's budget for 320 million in transfer authority the administration's request that would be her request isabel guzman's request to the president for 320 million in transfer authority now that now let's realize this is coming from the sba the money that would be pulled isn't from the iija another area where they can pull money to the give to the sba they're taking the 320 million from small businesses which are down here i've just painted this out and you your money and instead of the money going here which was congress's intent The money is gone from you and is going here to the Honorable Isabel Guzman and to the SBA. So that money would be going to her program instead of small businesses. So that money, gone. So let's go ahead and the administrator's request in the president's budget for the $320 million transfer authority from the idle targeted advance program. Remember, it went from there, not the IJ, has not been approved by Congress. Now she's supposed to take everything like that to Congress, to Ben Cardin, and say, "Ben, here I want to, I need to, do, I need to get this money for the SBA. Can I do this?" And he says, "Yay or nay." And it's not within the administration's authority to prejudge Congress's intent by setting aside funding for the program administration when small businesses have yet to be served. So you're setting, you're setting aside funding for you over here and you're filling up your little bank account but these guys down here the small businesses is where we needed the money to go it didn't it didn't they pulled it and not only that but i believe they pulled another 500 million half a billion dollars from it we're going to get to that in a second but now are you following me i hope this is a little more clear for you and i know that it might sound like bad news but with them issuing this to isabel guzman we got to realize this is really good news because the money's got to go back in and the money is there. We're going to get there now. Interesting, right? This next part blew my mind and it might blow yours too. But remember, once again, we are getting openness. We are getting transparency here. This is one of the first pieces of transparency we've been able to see for a while. So it kind of, and, it, and it plays into your favor, getting your, your loans and your grants, which is amazing news. So let's go ahead and read it. It might, it sounds horrible and leave your comments down below on what you think, how this was handled. But, uh, this could be, uh, Bye bye, Isabel. I don't know. We'll see. Here we go. Next one. Considering that the SBA transferred 500 million, 500 million to its own account, administrative accounts, to the SBA, less than two months ago, under a separate authority in Section 9006, the IIJ, so she realized that she can go get money for her needs for the SBA's needs. And that's a lot of money for her needs, but she doesn't have to pull it from you. She doesn't have to pull it from the funds that were set aside for you. The decision to refuse to tap funding that could be used to keep the idle program operational is that much harder to comprehend. So they are saying that makes it really hard, Isabel, for us to understand what you're doing over here. We're, we're not getting why you did it. We don't understand what your motives are, what you think our intent was for that. So 
Isabel's in trouble. It, and it's not hard for us to comprehend. And they're kind of, that comprehend kind of goes both ways. Is it, is it that much hard? Is it hard for you to comprehend this for Isabel? No. It's then, but that makes it hard for us to comprehend on uh, why you did what you did and how you did it and why you stopped the program when the funds were still available for these businesses. Interesting, right? So the money's getting put back in. And this next and last and final line is the drawing point where I'm saying, and we can all kind of understand that the money is going to be put back in and it's going to be put back in sooner than she would have hoped to have to do it. She, they're making her work on this now to get that money back there for you. Let's give Ben and Van Hollen a huge hand for that bipartisanship. Ben is a Democrat. Van Hollen is a Republican. Seeing them finally get together on something because small businesses are bipartisan on almost everything. We serve Democrats. We serve Republicans. We serve independents. We serve whips. It don't matter when it comes to small business. If you need a, a product, we're there for you. We're going to get it to you. Or if we're going to sell our product, the buyers are there for there. They want to buy from small businesses. They want to support us as well. And it doesn't matter where we stand on the ticket in the left and the right. It matters that we're small businesses. We work together. We live together. You know, love, peace, and joy, peeps. Come on. Now let's go on to this last piece. You're going to love it. And this is pretty much where they're saying, get it in gear and get that money to you. So this is the uh, nail in the coffin, if you want to say, the final sentence of this text. We expect your agency to take swift action to make all available funding accessible to eligible applicants immediately and look forward to your prompt response. Sincerely, Ben Cardin, Committee on Small Businesses and Entrepreneurship, and Chris Van Hollen, Chairman of Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Financial Services and General Government. And they are directing this to... Isabel Guzman of the SBA, the administrator. Get it done. Do it now. Prompt response. Applicants immediately look. Available funding accessible. Swift action. They're working on it, and it's going to be quick. Isabel's on a short leash right now, and I just want to encourage you guys out there, along with Jason McElhome, quick, quick shout out to my boy out there. Thank you for all you do, brother. And, and you guys out there who are in this process right now, kind of wondering what's going on. Hopefully, this is very good news to you. It should be very exciting knowing that, hey, they're going to be putting money back in. We're not out of this ball game, and there is money over in other areas for appropriations to you. And once again, those that are responsible for making sure you get that money are Chris Van Hollen and Ben Cardin. They're right over here, and they're the ones that are saying, do this, do this. So it's nice to know that they're on our side. They are looking at this, and they did see the, they did feel the heat when Isabel Guzman went off on her own and did some things that she really wasn't authorized to do and, and with, for, through Congress intent. And she's pulling, she pulled money into her own program instead of giving it to you. So that's pretty much this in a nutshell. And I hope I explained this in a little bit better depth than I did yesterday. I was very excited. I was very excited to get that news that, hey, they're gonna be putting the money back. They're gonna be putting the money back, good. In those businesses that were getting with me on my channel and saying, hey, look, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. My heart, hearts were broken everywhere across this country for the small businesses that were left out. And now to know that you're not, you've not been left out, hopefully you understand it a lot more clear than I made it yesterday. It was very, I was very excited yesterday. Yes, maybe I was talking a little bit too fast. I don't know, but maybe, maybe it wasn't. But can somebody just say, hey, this is great news for you, knowing that the funds should be coming back in for you. And also, we would like to see the funds put back in for the $10,000 idle grant. And we got to get together and band together and make that happen as well, guys. So can somebody out there say, hey, we still won our 10K. Yeah.